Love is in the air, my friends. Oh, yes. The only time you'll hear these guys make noise is when they're breeding. And that's Big Mama he's breeding right now. And, uh, oh, am I disturbing you? I'm so sorry. No, oh, let's scratch her butt. Oh, she loves it. I think it's driving her crazy. Are you gonna step on my bad foot? Oh, God, that hurts. So he just lets me give him a nice scratch on that neck. Little guys that hatched, that was living in the enclosure. It's a little elongated tortoise. This tortoise remained hidden for so long that I didn't see it until it got to this size. Now you guys know, I will never let this lizard get cold again after his near death experience with me a couple of years ago. Hey buddy, hey buddy. You'll see this, you ready guys? There they are, and look where they are. What's going on everyone? Hanging out here. We got some baby cherry heads that are going to be going to their new owners. We're going to be sending them with my friends at Redline Shipping. But today we've got so much to do. In addition to getting these little guys packaged up, it was kind of chilly last night. So I want to walk around and make sure the animals are doing okay. So that's what we're going to do in today's video. So let's go for a walk along the camp. And first things first, we're going to go check out our black throats. I'll show you guys exactly what I do for those cold nights here in Florida. And when I say cold, every year you guys get on my case because I don't know what cold is. It's uh, definitely not as bad as what you guys are dealing with up north. I know in Pennsylvania, they already have a foot of snow up in the Scranton area, but right here, we want to just show you. Last night I came out and I went ahead and I made sure, oh, you can hear them. They're looking good. They're making noise. You can't really see them, but they're in there, guys. The two black throats are doing well. They're inside there. We have a nice cave that actually has some foam around the outside. It's insulated. And then I just block this up using a towel or a piece of cloth to keep the heat in. We have a heating a heat pad as well. And that keeps those guys good. So I like to do this because, you know, this is the toughest time of year for me as a reptile keeper. Florida is almost perfect, but not quite. Let's go this way, Matt. I'm keeping you on your toes. Matt's got to walk backwards while holding the camera. Sometimes the poor guy winds up in situations he doesn't want to do. Now nah, I'm going this way. He tried guess. We're gonna go check out the Sulcatas next. Those guys have a pretty good house. Um, they are pretty smart too. Some tortoises are a little bit smarter than the other ones when it comes to going in and out of their habitats or their hidden shelters, their heated shelters as it is. So right now, check it out. We got Hercules uh, getting the job done over here. It is breeding season for the Sulcatas. We've been getting eggs, but the girls are out and what they're doing, up. Oh, love is in the air, my friends. Oh yes. It's about the only time you'll hear these guys make noises when they're breeding. And that's Big Mama he's breeding right now. She lays a ton of eggs. She is very prolific. Sorry, dude, don't mind me. Just keep going. Now, what's happening here? So basically, like I said, it is breeding season. And, uh, oh, am I disturbing you? I'm so sorry. It's not like we need any more sulcatas out here. How you going, buddy? Am I annoying you? I think he's a little annoyed. I'll back up a little bit, but it's so awesome to see these big tortoises. Third largest tortoise species on earth is the sulcata tortoise. And these guys are from, of course, Africa. And, uh, oh, she wants to get out of here. So Big Mama is about 120 pounds, and I don't even have a weight on Hercules right now. All I know is that he was uh, given to me by a nice old Jewish man uh, in Boca Raton, Florida, who came up to me at a reptile show, and he said, hey, I got a tortoise. You want it? And I was like, well, show me a picture. And Hercules was so big and beautiful, I took it. So uh, it was really cool. The guy did sound like uh, Jackie Mason. Uh, that's an old time comedian that my parents loved. Uh, and he's a very funny guy. So anyway, it was cool. I got this guy. But as you can see, check out what the females are doing. All the tortoises come out of their shelter. Okay, we've got in here two heating elements that are hanging from the ceiling. We've got what's called a passive barrier. We got two layers of passive heat barrier. Okay, so when you put your hand in there, you can feel it's a little bit warmer than it is outside. So during the evenings, during those cold nights, 
The tortoises go in, they stay in, and I gotta be honest, Sulcata's a pretty smart tortoise. They know where they wanna go to stay warm. And as soon as the sun's out, even on a cooler day, they're able to absorb the sun's radiation so they can warm their bodies up. So they are a very hardy tortoise. Remember, these guys are from just along the Sahara Desert, the southern fringe, the Sahal is what it's called. So it's a dry, arid area, but it does experience some cool nights. And because these guys are just a giant, overgrown, burrowing tortoise, like our gopher tortoise, they create these burrows in nature that shield them from the extremes of temperature. Just like our desert tortoise, gophers agazizi, and the gopher Polythemus, which is the gopher tortoise here in Florida, does the same thing. Extreme temperatures here in Florida, extreme temperatures in Africa, they build those long burrows and that provides them with a nice consistent temperature because they go sometimes 30 feet into the ground. So it's amazing. Here in this idyllic camp, they don't dig burrows. They just go on into that nice shed that I built for them. So uh, yeah, let's move along from a smart tortoise to a lazy tortoise. One that every night during the winter, I've got to wrangle them all up. I'm talking about the radiated tortoises over here. I've got to wrangle all these little dudes up, put them away, uh, just to make sure we don't have any issues with them. And they live in this little shelter, which has some waterfront property. So these guys get to stay in here. I wonder if there's any still left in here. There's one guy left, staying in there. But I throw some hay in. We've got the Reptile Basics heater right up on the top. And that radiates just enough heat to keep them warm and comfortable uh, during those cold nights. Basically, when I'm heating my reptiles, I'm not trying to keep them at a basking temperature. I'm just trying to keep them at a nice, stable temperature that doesn't go below 65 degrees because you can kill your tortoises by overheating them in these tortoise shelters. Now check it out. Here's Cersei, she's out sunbathing. I pick her up and I actually have three bins that are by my front door because this enclosure is actually in my front yard. So I actually take this gal. Oh, you don't like that? Oh, come get a scratcher. Let's scratch her. They can feel through their shells. Oh, you ever scratch a tortoise before people? Oh, let's scratch her butt. Oh, she loves it. I think it's driving her crazy. Oh, I got your honey. I got your Buddha. Very cool. It's so funny. I'll see these guys actually take their shells and rub them on cactus because they can scratch. So they feel through their shell. Very interesting to see this kind of stimulation from her. But like I said, last night we got her out of the cold, just put her in a bin, and she stayed in my foyer in my home. Her, Timmy, and Boba, the three small Aldabra tortoises, came over here. But let me show you what I had to do with the big tortoises. Now this can be a challenge, but thankfully, Nostradamus and Socrates and Darwin, oh, look, there they are. They're pretty darn smart. Last night when I came home, I came home from a bike race. These two tortoises were inside their house, but the old lady, Darwin, she decided she was gonna sleep out under the stars, but I didn't feel comfortable with that because it was getting to about 55 degrees last night. So I have what I call the tortoise motivation stick. And what I do is I gently tap her. She woke up and I'm like a shepherd. I guess I'm a torpor, I guess is what you would call me. So I would just tap her and she actually knows that when she gets tapped like that, oh, I gotta wake up. That's actually how tortoises get other tortoises to move. They kind of ram into them, they annoy them, and the big tortoise will get up and move. Uh, it's kind of a funny way that they communicate. So I learned this from my friend Sam Piscucci from Florida Iguana and Tortoise Breeders. And basically, gentle tap, tortoise gets annoyed, and because of conditioning, you gonna step on my bad foot? Oh God, that hurts. Oh goodness, I have an arthritic toe and it hurts when the tortoises step on it. Anyway, um, through conditioning, I'm able to just tap her. She knows where she's gotta go. Last night it was pitch black, I had a flashlight out, but she found her way back into her shelter. It took me about 10 minutes to get her to walk. Oh, hey there, bud. That's my boy. He's always in. Him and Socrates right here, Nostradamus and Socrates are the best behaved when it comes to going in their shelters, aren't you? 
you're a good boy. You go right in every night, sleeps in the nice warm shelter in his hay, and he just relaxes. But the cool thing is, is again, black shells, they come out, they lay right in that sun. Look at how long that neck is. Is that amazing, guys? Beautiful, and he loves to get scratched. So he just lets me give him a nice scratch on that neck. Oh, I give him a scratch in here, in his armpits. How much do you think he weighs? Oh man, he's over 150 pounds now. This tortoise is doing so well. Got this tortoise in August of 2004. And so about 18 years later, 19 years almost, this guy's just doing fantastic. You guys know that I love this tortoise, right? Don't tell me otherwise, this is my favorite. I love this guy. So uh, just a really cool species, the Aldabra tortoise. And thankfully they are good about going in their shelter because you can imagine if I have to wrangle up what's going to be, gosh, gonna be uh, six of these big giant tortoises eventually. Um, it's gonna be a lot of work. So the sooner you can get them to go in on their own, the easier it's gonna be for you. Poor Sam Piscucci, he's got a lot of work to do. That's why he came up with the tortoise motivator. All right, we got more animals to check out. Let's go. Let's see how everyone's doing over here. This is what I have to do, man. It's, it's a constant, th this time of year, to be honest, stresses me out. In the middle of the night, sometimes on a very, very cold night, I wind up waking up and I wind up taking a laser, a laser gun and a laser thermometer and I'm able to take temperatures. Here are the cherry heads. They're out right now. I made sure they were all in, but you notice where they are, guys? They are in the sun, soaking up that beautiful South Florida sun. Today, guys, it's only gonna get to about 76 degrees. Can you believe how cold that is? I know you're, you're, you're yelling at your phones and computer screens right now because it's probably 28 degrees where you are. Uh, um, but I suffered through winter for 18 years of my life growing up in Long Island, and now I don't have to worry about it. Of course, here are the rock iguanas. These are the rhinos, and they're both in the sun. You've got Petra, and Petra is way over here. If you look, he's really soaking that sun up. And in the winter, our sun dips further south, so the sun is going to be a little bit further south in the winter time. Let's see if he's warmed up enough to see if he wants a little treat from the grass here. Oh, there's a nice weed. Come on. Oh yeah, he's he's hungry. Always hungry, never full. And uh, I like to be able to just pluck little weeds out. These are good for them. You can go try it out. Matt, go ahead, feed a lizard, dude. Let's see, she'll eat some. See if you can poke it through there and give her a little food. There, she'll take it the rest of the way. Good deal. So she's getting a little, little treat. They've warmed their bodies up. These guys are not necessarily too far out of their range, maybe five, 600 miles north. Um, but these are again, a very hardy lizard. Their box is just beyond us here. Uh, there is a heating element in there, a heating pad from Stansfield. Uh, Stansfield heating pad from Osborne Industries. Really heavy duty, what they call uh, pig blanket or livestock heaters. Uh, you wanna check those out. You can find them, Google Osborne Industries Stansfield heating pads. Uh, they're the most durable ones I've found. Um, in the other uh, enclosures, we're using our Fluke um, heat tape uh, because they're smaller animals and they're not outside. So these guys are good. They've got their house. Let's go see some of the others. Of course, after you give her her little treat, the, that sticky tongue. Come on, there you go. She's got it. Let's go, dude. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. So the Argus monitor is up and sunbathing. Uh, there is, of course, a cave that they have. Okay, but you'll notice he's in the sun, high up. He's still at a size and age where he's concerned about getting eaten by other animals. Now, all monitors, whether they're terrestrial or arboreal, are gonna like the trees when they're small because the larger prey or the larger predators, rather, are down below. Oh, look at that. Whoa, he's, oh, he's bluffing you, dude. You see how she coiled oh. the uh, yeah, tail? Turned the tail, that was his, that's the warning. That's showing there you that you they're right not there. feeling good. Yeah, they're nervous. So we don't wanna make them too nervous because we want this animal to really feel comfortable. But the fact that that animal's higher up in the air, higher than, uh, than Matt and I, you can really, uh, they get a better sense of, you know, feeling comfortable. So here I am, I could just stand back here 
the animal probably has its tail curled, but if I wait a little while, it might actually calm down and just relax. So pretty cool stuff. We're just making sure that they get habituated to people so that they in turn are more agreeable and uh, easier to handle. Now, how did I deal with this animal? And of course the female, if you notice down here, we've got an electrical cord going in and of course I made a really nice house for this guy, but this species is a burrower. So they burrowed into the dirt. And just like we said with the tortoises earlier in the video, that the Argus monitor burrows down, they're able to use the earth as a natural way to insulate themselves. So I was able to shoot the uh, temp gun down there and they were at about 66 degrees. So that's pretty cool. Um, didn't even have to use the heated shelter. As long as it doesn't get too, too cold, I'm feeling comfortable with them just going underground. All right, so now we come on in. The Chinese box turtles on the ground, don't worry about them at all. They can take the cool temps. Watch your head. Uh, of course, we have Lola. Hi, Lola. Hi, sweetheart. Lola and Guapo, he's up on top, bobbing his head, saying what up. But here's Lola, there's the Guaps, and uh, basically they just spent the night together in their shelter. All these are insulated, they have heat pads in them. Uh, and then I just shut the door here. If you look right here, I just shut it, but I don't latch it. So last night wasn't gonna be a deathly cold night. I didn't wanna lock them in. So in the morning, they're able to push themselves uh, out. Guapo loves being pet. Oh, he loves it. Now, I wish we could get to the point where this one likes to be pet, but no. He's a complete nut. Yep. And now, here's what's funny, guys. Watch your step to there, Matt. You see this? Mm -hmm. So here's a little red for tortoise, okay? And I picked up the three red for tortoises that were here, and I placed them in this. Oh, and look. Oh, in there. Yeah, look at this. So this little one is in here. Okay, but obviously one must have been pretty brave and crawled out on their own. We'll just put this guy back down and I'm gonna check the third one in here. Nope. So the two of them actually just pushed out and kind of tumbled down. Let's just find that third one. There's one by the door here. Yep. One right there. One right there. And we where's that third one? One here. Hmm. You guys got to help me find it. One here. We've, we've got an elongated tortoise in here as well. Up oh, here he is. He's over here in the sun. So two of them got out of the cave, out of the heated Where's shelter that? alone. He's right down there, see? Oh, yeah. yeah. So that's pretty cool that they actually crawled out on their own. How did they get down from there? Man, I think they just, they bungee jumped. Yeah. Extreme turtles. They must be ninja tortoises. Um, and then just down in here. Oh, what do we got here, guys? I don't think you guys have met this tortoise yet. This is one of my little guys that hatched, that was living in the enclosure. It's a little elongated tortoise. Naturally hatched in the ground and was grow. Look at this, grew up on its, on its own. Outdoors in my enclosure. Is that amazing? And it remained hidden for so long. This tortoise remained hidden for so long that I didn't see it until it got to this size. And uh, Kate, Kate found it with the kids. It was like, dude, we found this guy in the enclosure. So this little dude has been doing great. So since then I took it and um, even though it was living in that enclosure, I wanted it to be completely safe. So it lives here. There are never Perfect. issues with monitors in in here? Uh, no, no, dude, we just have the uh, blue one is right here. The blue one. Yeah, they're the blue. Look at this guy taking a drink. Look at this guy. Go look at him. He's found his way to the water. All right. And he's just getting his little drink. So that's pretty awesome. Now tortoises are creatures of habit. They're gonna know where the water source is. They're gonna know where shelter is. They're gonna know where food is. That's why when these animals get their habitat fragmented uh, by human building and so on, it really screws them up because most of these animals spend their lives in a very small range. So we gotta be careful how we build and try and allow for overpasses and things for animals to get over these dangerous roads because tortoises don't understand those barriers. All right. 
Inky's looking good. She's up here. She goes in her house, uh, which is that modified log, that log hide. This is, of course, from our friends at Aquascape. And I'll show you what I did, just simply. You know, I've got, it's basically to hide any kind of plumbing, but I just made a round uh, doorway. She can go in and out. There's a heating element in there. And uh, she goes in and out of that. You guys saw a few weeks ago, I made the hole bigger. She's back to using it. So last night was the first cool night that we really needed it done. And uh, she performed as she was supposed to. All right, let's go see the croc monitors and wrap this thing see up. You guys. All right, so Cayman Creek is doing well. And of course, the caiman go into the water at night. All my crocodilians like to stay in the water at night because what do we know about water? It loses heat faster than the air. Um, so they're able to stay warmer in the water. Let's see now if our lady Lulu came out. Now, she was a challenge last night and I'll tell you why. <laughs> uh, I came out to check on everyone or to put everyone away. And because I didn't want to walk all the way back, Two, get the gloves. I paid the price. I don't see her out, so I think she's still in her house. But here's what happened. I came in, I didn't see her, but I noticed a very pretty tail sticking out from underneath this Universal Rocks fake log, okay? It was just laying down here. I had to pick her up, so I paid the price. I got scratched up really good by her claws. Uh, some of you lizard keepers have seen worse, but there's just something about croc monitor claws. They are recurved talons, and uh, she was not afraid to shred into me. So I was screaming out here, but let's see. Are you ready? Let's peek in. Just see what she's doing. There she is. Oh my God, she's so beautiful. Isn't she gorgeous? So yeah, heater's on, and as you can see, she's peppy and uh, stayed at a comfortable temperature. I know, I know. We're above you. You don't like that. Now, of course, what did I just get done saying, guys? She's an arboreal monitor. She feels confident when she's higher than us. When she's on the ground, not too thrilled. So, like I said, wear gloves if you're going to mess with monitors. Okay, let's just lock this up. And uh, I was able to get Slinky in last night. He's probably out sunbathing. So, she's good. Oh, man, I brought my tortoise stick. I'm gonna have to make sure I bring this back out front because I'll be looking for it for a long time and not realize where I put it. Let's see where Slinks is. Slinky! Slinky! He was in his house last night. Surprised he's not here yet. I know. He's usually so good with coming out. Slinky! Up! Oh, there he is. Look where he is. Here he comes. He was out sunbathing. He was actually out on the old secondary shelter I made for Pinky when we had Pinky living here. There he is. Come on, boy. Come here, boy. Oh, there's Slinky. There he is. Awesome, man. You're feeling good? Now, you guys know I will never let this lizard get cold again after his near-death experience with me a couple of years ago. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. I am always on top of making sure this lizard is warm. Always, always, always. I love you so much. Ah, uh, he's a good boy. He wants to get fed. I'll probably hold off and feed him tomorrow because we are going to have another cooler night tonight. So he'll have to wait. I don't feed too much in the winter. They're eating once a week right now. Um, so their metabolism's a bit slower. And so he's going to have to eat a little bit less, aren't you? Nice and solid. That's my boy. That's a good fella. And you can see, super, super comfortable with me. He's the best. Oh, I love getting his little hiney. He's gonna whip me. Oh boy. Anyway, Slinks is looking good, man. All right, we got one more thing, one more animal to check. That is, of course, the croc monitors. I think they're still in the house. We're gonna open the door for them. Uh, the croc monitors, I gotta tell you. Um, when I have those guys, on a cold night, what I do is, if they don't go in on their own, I kind of wait. I got to wait until they get cool enough that I can easily pick them up. And uh, I learned my lesson from Lulu. I went back and I got my gloves because they will shred you. So let's go open their door and allow them to come out into the sunlight. Ready? 
Oh, I'm really excited. I got another universal rock water ball coming that's gonna go right underneath there. It's gonna look so much better in here. So I pulled out their old Waterland tub and they're gonna live in here. So you'll see this, you ready guys? There they are. And look where they are, they're laying down on the heat pad together. No drama. We are uh, loving that. Oh yeah, just leave them be. I don't want to startle them too much. Oh my gosh. But yeah, even though they were sluggish last night when I pulled them out, they're still absolutely capable of messing you up, even in that sluggish state. And they're still powerful. They're just slow, but they can still grab onto the branches, hard to pull them off. Their mouths are open. If they clamp down on you, it's just gonna be clamping down really slowly. So pretty nuts. There you have it. Uh, good day, a good day, friends. Everyone looks to be healthy and happy. And just a, for honorable mention, our friend Colin the Python and Buttercup. Colin, I pulled out and put him in a bin and he went in the house. And then we have the heaters inside. Oh, what am I forgetting? You guys are supposed to remind me, my tortoise motivation tool. I would have forgot it, but thankfully you guys out there got my back. Okay, so we got our little sticky stick and I'm gonna go ahead and pack up some tortoises. And that is gonna be that for this episode of Camp Cannon. All the animals went through their first proper cold night in the 50s without any drama. Stay tuned because I'm sure this winter we're gonna dip at least once into the 30s uh, down here in South Florida. And that, well, that involves a whole lot of work on my part because I'm gonna have to get those guys sometimes into my own house. All right, these two little buggers have definitely sunbathed enough in the water. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and pack them up and ship them out to uh, Greg Concepcion from the Bronx, from the Boogie Down. Greg, these are your tortoises. They're heading to you right now. Uh, I got work to do. What are you guys doing in my house? I didn't invite you in. Get out of here. I'll see you guys later.